Now, Martin Fru, you're here to talk about advances in systemic therapy for neuroendocrine tumours affecting the lung. Uh, what have you got to say to us here at the Lugano conference? Well, actually I was giving quite a, a difficult topic, the uh, low-grade neuroendocrine carcinomas, the metastatic ones, um, for sure are quite a, a rare disease, so there is not a lot of data out there. And what I did in my work was actually review the data about chemotherapy and also uh, targeted therapy that is available in these very rare clinical situations of patients with uh, low-grade carcinoids of the lung. First of all then, what should doctors be looking out for? This is rare. Well, I think most of the studies have been uh, performed in neuroendocrine tumors in general, regardless of the origin of the cancer. And it's really hard for the oncologist to get an overview where exactly um, are these uh, neuroendocrine tumors from the lung hiding. So it's, it's quite a kind of difficult to um, extrapolate the data that is generated in neuroendocrine tumors in general to the um, lung carcinoid tumors. So uh, these tumors, many of them are low grade, so what are the consequences? Well, uh, as I said, I did look at the low grade uh, carcinoids of the lung and there is there are some really small series that looked at it and there seems to be a differential um, efficacy of chemotherapy in this really small segment of patients. So the, the bottom line is that we really need to do more studies. When we do studies um, in carcinoids in general, we should uh, analyze lung carcinoids separately to gain more information here. And uh, neuroendocrine tumors of the lung include small cell lung cancer. Right, it's a continuum of low-grade neuroendocrine tumors and intermediate-grade um, neuroendocrine tumors, also uh, called carcinoid or typical carcinoids and atypical carcinoids. And within the high-grade neuroendocrine tumors, of course, those are the ones who are uh, more frequent. You have small cell lung cancer and as a smaller entity also the large cell neuroendocrine carcinomas. Now what light have you been able to throw in your work and the discussions you've had on diagnosis and management and how to optimize these and indeed individualize them? Well there is uh, actually quite a lot going on in low-grade neuroendocrine carcinomas but of course very much going on in small cell um, uh, lung cancer. However, if you compare it to non-small cell lung cancer, you really have to say that we are lagging behind with progress in small cell lung cancer. So there are lots of um, targeted approaches being followed in small cell lung cancer, but so far, uh, so far no um, treatment has uh, led to any major success. And what are the big lessons that you need doctors to take out of all, all of the knowledge you've gained? Well, in, in small cell lung cancer, I think that we need to have a better understanding of the complex biology and also uh, identify predictive molecular markers uh, to make really progress in, in this field. And we're working on it, but we're not quite there at the moment. For the low-grade neuroendocrine tumors, as I said, it's very important to identify this group of patients as a separate entity, not mix them up with, for example, um, pancreatic neuroendocrine carcinomas which, who seem to fare differently than um, tumors with, uh, with the, their origin in the lung. So these studies also have to be made. What about the use of novel agents and molecularly targeted agents? Where are those appropriate? Those are mainly, the best thing would be to employ those in, uh, in study protocols. What is currently of interest in both in uh, low-grade and small cell uh, lung cancer are actually the anti-angiogenic approach since those are very well vascularized tumors. One would appreciate that you would get some success here. Then there of course are other um, pathways that are looked at, PCL2 inhibition, HDAC or histone deacetylase uh, inhibition. Um, so there are very, very interesting um, um, approaches currently followed, but none of them um, are ready for prime time. But what are the big areas of progress, though, that doctors need to keep in mind? Well, 
as I said, there is really not that much of progress as far as clinical implementation at that point, but there is really a, a broad field of, 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 in, of, of research being performed in all different kinds of uh, targeted approaches, which lead to the hope that finally one of these approaches will uh, come to fruit and uh, improve results for, for our patients. Uh, how do you think busy doctors should be thinking about this whole issue? They have a patient who has a neuroendocrine tumour. What should be the priorities? Well, the priorities is not to um, hasten things. Oftentimes those are very um, slow-growing tumours. So the first thing would be really to think, does this uh, pa particular patient need therapy? Because once it is metastasized, uh, there is actually no cure for the disease. So the primary goal would be not to um, make harm. And at that point, that's the number one question. Do you really have to jump in with therapy or can you um, observe what is the natural course of the disease and then decide upon when to initiate any kind of treatment? And if you go for therapy, systemic therapy is preferred? Systemic therapy is often preferred. There are other options. There are localized uh, therapy options like surgery, also um, chemoembolization if you have one mass that is causing problems. But actually, most, in most of the cases, you need chemo or, chemo or um, octreotide, um, a, a somatostatin receptor targeting therapy to, uh, for the patient. But watchful waiting is, is a possible option. Correct. Mm. Okay. So what bottom line message should doctors take away from your talk here today in Lugano? I think uh, in my talk I focused on this low-grade neuroendocrine carcinoma that, as this is really a rare situation and a lot of doctors maybe do not encounter this situation at all because it's so rare. So in this kind of patients I would draw the attention towards uh, the fact that um, the published data out there, most of it is about gastropancreatic cancers, cannot necessarily be directly extrapolated to um, carcinoids of the lung. So that's uh, uh, an important point. And how might the multidisciplinary approach help? That's al always uh, very important, of course, to, um, to have a multidisciplinary uh, discussion also for as we discussed, uh, the potential role of local treatments in these patients. So to conclude, uh, is there a, a, a consensus here in Lugano about neuroendocrine tumours and the therapy for them, do you think? I think what we, we can say is that we really need to, to um, make better studies to really document the, um, the response um, of these very rare patients to the new treatments and hopefully this will eventually then evolve into a, a new standard. But at the moment we do really not have uh, sufficient data to suggest one agent over the other or uh, give general um, recommendation in this very rare subgroup of patients. Martin Fru, thank you very much for joining eCancer TV. Thank you for the interview.